I grew up in a small town, Western Pennsylvania, two seasons, baseball, football. Picture postcard day. Bounded out of my house, I wanted to show off my brand new baseball hat, red. Had a little ball sewn onto it. Loved that little ball, it was unique. I couldn't wait to show it off to my classmates. Guess what? There I go, down the alley. And you know how you have that feeling when you head into an alley? Maybe a little bit of feeling that there could be danger, the antenna's up and you're kind of careful, you just don't know what lurks around the corner. It's that kind of feeling. Well, what lurked around the corner that day was another form of predator, almost as dangerous to me as the ones on the savannah. Well, those predators were bullies, the ones that had foreclosed their futures by not taking steps forward. All of life is forward. We cannot stay hermetically sealed in a bubble thinking we are safe, thinking we have security. It's an illusion. There is no such thing. The economy rises and falls. The vicissitudes, vacillations beyond our control. What do we control? Our attitude. That day, I wanted to control one thing, my baseball hat. Loved that hat. On the way to school, heard the clanging of beer cans, heard the wine bottle drop, and I knew Chase was on me. I was running as fast as I could. I was hauling. I was nine years old. My legs were churning. At least I thought they were. But they caught me. They were bigger. They were faster. Everyone in my town was faster. They caught me, and I'll never forget the church, the facade of that church where they cornered me. And I can still see the slow motion, the ball being torn off, and I can hear the bounce of that ball and the hat. And there I was. And when I got back up, I trudged home with a torn hat and torn pride and a whole blank load of fear. And I walked into my father's garage. He was a woodworker, Pennsylvania State Policeman, six foot three, 240 pounds of disciplinarian. He was John Wayne in that town. John Wayne in the state. The disciplinarian and tough. I said, Dad, Dad, they beat me up. He looked up, said, sawdust off. He said, son, let me tell you something. You can run from the bullies in your life, and you can run till you run out of room. But one day, when you find yourself up against a wall, you got one of two choices. You can slink down and cower, or you can go forward. You can take and face your fear, and you can punch your way out. I never ran again. I took that lesson. It became a metaphor for life, because life is always forward. Physically, how am I going to do it? How am I going to keep going? How am I going to keep going? I would submit to you that presence, physicality, intellectual, emotional, spiritual, all those pillars must be in alignment just like a house. We talk about construction. You know what happens with most claims? The house subsides, it fractures, there's a fissure. When those things are in concert, in the middle, they house the most important thing you can't make up, passion. Passion, passion, passion. Passion, purpose, intensity, and chemistry. That's what people feel. That's why people stay. Always forward is the way through fear. Always forward. No retreat, no surrender. Move forward. Every day you have to win 15 minutes of the day. We look and we think, geez, did we make that sale? Did we do it this week? Did we kick ass this month? It comes in 15 minute increments. Do something in 15 minutes. 15 minutes, small wins, capture the day, the year. It makes the career. You will live within the context of your nature and it will true itself up at some point. When you are authentic, you are in alignment with your nature. Authenticity is felt. Authenticity is felt. Authenticity, passion and purpose move people. Not brochures and not verbiage. Your analytical side, your hard skill set must support and sometimes does drive that which is most important, and that's the soft skill. Do you have empathy? Do you care? Do you know what I do? And do you know why I do it? And why should I be with you? How are you gonna take care of me? How are you gonna further my interests? Think next and build value first by becoming a value to yourself. And you're not gonna do it unless you look inside. Think, be true to yourself, and know yourself. That's the way. You'll find the fire. Somebody will find the fire. Somebody will do it. And you'll look back and say, whoa, what a platform. It worked because you're going to go forward. And it's the small steps. Somebody's going to quit. You're going to get hit. You're going to get hit hard. And somebody's going to quit. They're going to quit first. They're going to blink and it's done. And that's when you're going to be there because you're never gone away. You've never gone away. You're always on the radar screen. You're moving slowly toward yes. If yes appears as the juggler vein, yes, go. But don't go and get tossed back because you become like everybody else. 
Be distinctive. Be distinctive. Master one thing. Master yourself. An original thought is never original because it always comes from someplace, from parents, from books, from what we hear. But try to think, try to think out of that proverbial box and try to expand some sort of original thought and make the approach as original and authentic as you truly are. Don't conform to a straight line, and I'm a rebel at nature, and I follow that rebel cause. I just follow that. Within the constructs of integrity and how we should do things, I do. Let's go back one more time to the Paleolithic days, because if we're going to find fear, we're going to find the source of fear. We're going to find the source of fear within here. We've got to find where it came from, our ancestors. And now we're going to fly. There they are. Senescence, 26 years old, it's a long time for a caveman. Laying on the ground, there's a sliver of light unzipped from the dark of night. And it's reflecting off of, you gotta be kidding me. A red 458 Ferrari still has the tags on it? What the heck? They see it, what do they do? Well, they either freeze, or they run, flight, or they start fighting it. Expensive paint job if they fight it. There's a third, fourth option, it's sex. That would be interesting. It's a great visual though, right? Okay, what happens? Their brains, their brains are subject to the amygdala, almond-shaped group of cells. That's the first instinct. It's called the reptile brain. Let's call it the lizard right now. Neuroscientists will refer to it as the lizard brain. Dragon, lizard. We still own and we are still influenced. The first and primary influence we have is from that amygdala, from the brain on the Serengeti. They had no ability to think this is something different. It was all instinct, the same as we have. What brings us a form, a form of understanding is the rational sorting system called the prefrontal cortex, the new involved brain. That's the brain, the CEO executive level brain. That's where we can take that huh, is that a stick or a snake on that country road? I'm saying, man, that's a, that's a stick. That's a stick. Physicality, how you eat, what you eat, makes all the difference in how you can support those promises and cash the checks that your mind writes with your body. If you don't have confidence, you can't have confidence. Style, style will trump substance, initially. Substance must enter the room but if a person doesn't buy your confidence, they don't feel it, they're not gonna buy your story, they're not gonna buy you. They're gonna buy it from somebody else because they can buy what we sell from somebody else. They want confidence and they want confidence and you get it by growing your pillars. You connect with more people as you intellectually expand, as you learn, as you go on a quest. A quest to learn, to ask what if. And maybe you don't have the answers. Maybe some of the questions don't have answers, but you ask those questions. You learn more. You start to connect with more people. As you grow your physical capabilities, as your, as your body is able to cash the checks that your mind writes, you can start to move forward. Emotionally, we have to connect with people. People buy from emotion first. It doesn't matter the logic of your rate, how low your rate is, it doesn't matter. They won't get there if there's not an emotional connection. And if they do, in my experience, when they buy from people, from logic, they eventually wait, but not forever, for emotion to show up in the room. They wanna shake hands with emotion. People want to know that you care about them before they care about what you know. Being a student and learning is everything. And then being able to apply what you learn, that makes a difference. It's one thing to have the need, and it's a need to have a quest, to search, to search, to search. But you have to be open to what you find. And you have to be able to learn from what you find, and you have to be able to apply that what you find. That's learning right there. It comes from books, it comes from what you put in your head, it comes from other people, it comes from vision, it comes from just awareness. The one thing that will differentiate you from everyone else is awareness. What is actually happening here? Step outside of that equation of trying to make the money and trying to get the next sale. Where is the dynamic? What the hell is actually happening in this dynamic? Awareness. The other person's body. The other person, what they, what they write. How they deal with you. Where's your awareness quotient? How aware are you of what is really happening in this dynamic? And what do you have to do to change it if you can? That's awareness. Two main fears, we have two when we, were, when we were born. Fear of falling, fear of loud noises. The rest of them, thank your parents, thank your teachers, thank your bullies that chased you, 
and thank media. We fear loss, and we sure as hell fear change. But nothing can happen without the risk of both. We can't stay in a hermetically sealed circle of comfort. The more we expand the circle by learning, questioning, taking those small steps, the small steps, facing fear and absorbing the energy for fuel, not running from it, but moving through it, moving through it, we start to gain a life of increase, a life of sharing. What we're doing today in here is sharing, collaborating, cooperating, expanding the circle of what we think we know. Now, if we use it with fortitude and resilience, we move forward. Regrets is the worst thing. Leave it now. Do your very freaking best. You hear that and it goes in one ear and out the other because everybody always says, do your best, do your best, do your best. No, get in, engage, be aware, and know what you're doing and make a difference, man. It happens every day, every call, every way. Gosh, don't sit there on that porch thinking, what, what if I'd have tried a little harder? There's your boat of opportunity. It is always leaving the dock. The dock is for people who want to be safe. They're not in sales, they want to be safe. And you know what? The view will never change from right here. You're going to look out there and the view never changes. That's safe and that's okay. That's okay. But risk is where the reward is. And risk is always on the boat of opportunity. And the boat of opportunity is always leaving. And if you think you can do both, you can't because you're going to end up in the water. And all that's there is sharks and box, box jellyfish, man. And it's wet and it's cold. That's it. That's what's there. The boat is always leaving. Make a choice in your life. Don't stop, stammer, waffle. You're either going to be in this thing fully immersed or you're not. That's what sales is. It's not playtime, it's go time. Confidence is a crucial part. And I'm not talking about a faux confidence where you walk in and say, I'm the greatest thing in the world. No, I'm talking about real confidence. This comes from your learning, it comes from the application of your skill, skill set, it comes from your ability to build a platform that means something to you that's authentic and makes a difference for other people. That's the way of an exceptional person. Success is not measured and cannot be measured by the material. That's society foisting their own expectations on you, foisting their ideals on you, and trying to get you to own that verbiage that has everything to do with the material and less to do with the happiness quotient that most people chase as success. And success is something that's always under construction. Why don't you risk certainty, risk yourself, get out there in front of another person, be authentic, and make it happen? because this makes exceptional and this changes the game. Why? Because it's above the ordinary, because the ordinary is gonna follow the rules of the game. They're gonna show up, they're gonna throw up on their brochure, and they're gonna hope. They're gonna hope. You're gonna influence things to happen. You, can't, you can only make so many things happen, but you have to influence. But how you present yourself and how you posture yourself through belief, through conviction, self-belief, and treating people as people, not a concept, not a profile, not a number on a sales report, but as a person. That makes the difference. No one can give you an opportunity. I can't take something handed to you and say, here's your opportunity. You have to have a fertile environment, you have to be able to see it, and you have to seize it. You have to do it. The bank, the Woodage Company, no matter what the firm, if they give you the fertile environment, and it's not fertile for everyone, for the right person, you can take that environment and you can grow if you have the will, the belief, the conviction, the self-belief, the learning, and the application. And if other people believe in you, and they believe in you if you're what? Authentic. A friend of mine, my best friend um, and coworker, his mother passed away on Monday. 89 years old, and she fought a great fight. Nine years, she endured um, horrific dialysis treatments. Nine years, and she did it for the kids. And she did it because it's her nature to fight. She wants to fight, she kept fighting. Until such time as a, another illness came on, and she opted for the only choice she had on the table. She said, no more, no more dialysis. And that's strength. I'll tell you what else it is, it's perspective. All life is two things to me, it's context, perspective, and from there, it's choice. I would submit to you and I would request and I would only ask for one takeaway. You are in the apex 
the curve, the ability, the opportunity, the time, the physical, the intellectual, the spiritual. It's a time to live your life. You're each authoring your own book every day. You have the pen. You have the pen. Make it a story that others would want to read from and learn from. If a man or a woman lives for themselves, that's what they take to the grave and they leave nothing behind. If they live for, with, and through others, they leave that behind. They leave something behind. Live your life now. Not when you get to a point of regret, looking back with the rearview mirror of self-flagellation and saying, what if, if only I could have. Now's the time, always forward.